I always find it best when catching fish to come up from beneath them and they've got some nice edges around them but uh, this one I'm going to say no to. There's a thing called the rule of thirds in photography. The same thing applies to aquascaping. So today we're going to be setting up a breeding tank for my gold Altalian Prologus compressor seps. I've got six currently in this aquarium and this aquarium is four foot long by two foot wide by two foot deep. So I'm going to be moving them out of this tank and popping them into a smaller aquarium and I'm a little bit nervous about doing this because obviously I don't want any aggression amongst the compressor seps that I have and I know I've got multiple males so I uh, I'm still up in the air deciding if I should just put all six fish in there or pick out a male and then potential females and pop them in the tank with the male I choose. So uh, we'll see how we go with that. Might pop them all in and then see how we go over the next few days and then maybe take um, one or two of the fish out if there's too much aggression. But as you can see, there's two males there in the middle uh, that are showing signs of, I wouldn't say it's aggression, but uh, displaying to each other, showing who's boss in this tank. So they're going to be going into a small tank, obviously, uh, but I really want to breed these guys. I haven't bred compressor sets before. I've bred my white and uh, my black calvus numerous times. Uh, compressor sets are similar, similar looking fish, but I've never spawned them yet. So uh, they're definitely at a breeding size now. And I've had a couple people ask me if I sell them. So uh, definitely a market out there for them. And I definitely want to give them a try because they're a good challenge and uh, they're a beautiful fish. The whole body, not just the head, is gold. Uh, you can get gold head comps and um, they're, they're beautiful fish as well, but these guys, the full body is gold, so uh, quite nice looking fish and that unique body shape that compressor seps and calvus share. So uh, today we're gonna be setting up the breeding tank for these guys, hopefully get a pair out of them uh, in the near future. Uh, I'm gonna show you the tank that they're gonna go into now and then we're gonna pick out some rocks. Anyway, let's get into it. So this is the tank I'm going to be putting the Alto Lampologus compressor seps in, and I obviously need to aquascape it. I've only got two uh, albino bristlenose in here, the short fin variety, and yeah, we're gonna pick out some rocks, make a nice aquascape, and put the fish in here. Got some rocks here, and I've got an even larger one underneath this five foot tank. Uh, I'm not even gonna bother bringing that out, it's so heavy, and I'm not even gonna consider using it. Uh, these two rocks I really love, uh, because they're nice and flat and they've got some nice edges around them but uh, this one I'm going to say no to because again far too big. Uh, this one I really don't like the shape of this rock it does have some nice quartz marbling through it uh, but I'm not going to use this one either so we're really narrowing down the rocks that I'm going to put in the tank so I just pop these guys underneath here. Uh, I did have them in the tank the compressor steps are currently in. Now um, I do love this rock. This one might go in and uh, it might form kind of a shelf in the tank, like a kind of retaining wall. It's got this nice flat edge on it though, uh, which you could sit like that, uh, supported by some sand. However, the calvus obviously like to dig, so might not do that because that's a very heavy rock that will could topple over. So maybe we'll go for a uh, kind of like a retaining wall uh, look. I do like that look in some of my tanks. If you look at my other tanks, you'll see that kind of aquascaping in those tanks. Uh, but yeah, we might use that rock there and maybe a couple of these. Okay, let's see if we can make something work with these rocks. So first one in, this one. Uh, very careful, obviously, with laying the rocks into your aquariums. Uh, we'll try and make some sort of shelf, some sort of rock shelf looking thing in the tank with this by scooping up the rock. Uh, scooping up the pool filter sand and uh, pushing it back. So we've got some, looks like we've got levels in the tank. I like adding layers uh, into the aquarium. I think that makes it look more natural, but that's just me. And I actually kind of uh, find that I cheat when I do that. It's just a e very easy way to aquascape. Uh, and I always try to push the rocks off to the side never have anything really centered. There's a thing called the rule of thirds uh, in photography and uh, the same thing applies to um, aquascaping. It, things work best when uh, they're off center. Uh, so that's what I try to do. Now these rocks do have a kind of a different color tone to them to the first rock I put in here, but I'm still gonna use them. The calvers love caves rocks 
So it's best that you put a lot in here for them. Uh, try and get these air bubbles off. And yeah, they like to dig a little bit as well. So let's see what we can do with this rock here. Kind of a little go over here. Mm. Just know they're in the way. Don't want to crush them with this. Oh, found a shell. Nice. It's completely buried in the sand. So I was using this tank for uh, breeding Lamprologus ocellatus gold, and that's why the shell is in here. So get, out of, get that out of here. Move some of the sand up there. Obviously, this is going to make the water very murky. How about a magic track? A few moments later. Can't see a thing. Eh, it's not bad. Anyway, we'll give this tank a few hours to clear up and I'll show you what it looks like then. A few moments later. Okay, so this aquascape is a little bit different to what it looked like yesterday. I added another stone to this tank because I just felt it was a little bit bare and there wasn't enough rock in there for them. Uh, so the big stone in the middle, um, put that in yesterday and uh, this tank has had 24 hours to settle. It's a bit of detritus on the sand bed now and obviously the fish themselves are stirred up the sand bed. So I'll give this a uh, bit of a gravel vac now and uh, in 24 hours it will look a lot better than it does right now. And uh, hopefully the fish will settle in a bit. Uh, what I might also do is add in a ton shell or two and uh, maybe some terracotta pots. Now I really don't like adding terracotta pots to the tanks. Uh, obviously it doesn't look as natural as it does right now, uh, but to suppress aggression for the subdominant fish. So it's just so they have some places to hide. Uh, I'm just gonna add them in even though it won't look as nice as the tank looks now. Uh, well, to me anyway. So I'll do that and um, hopefully in 24 hours, things have settled down and this tank looks a lot nicer than it does now. Okay, now to catch the compressor steps out, let's see how long this is going to take. Uh, this one was pretty easy. I always find it best when catching fish to come up from beneath them. A little bit easier to catch them that way. So try and maneuver the net underneath the fish and then scoop up. Inevitably putting males in together in this smaller tank. So I'm gonna to have to keep a close eye on the behavior of these fish over the next few days to see how they are. Is there any aggression? And if there is aggression, uh, which ones to remove because I really don't want to uh, put a little bristle nose under here. I really don't want to lose any males, obviously. I don't want to kill any fish uh, just for the sake of me trying to breed them. Um, I don't want any of them to die. But the big thing is I want a pair to form, so I want to have the best chance possible. So, you know, female might form a bond with, with a male and there's my pair. Uh, sometimes these things can't be forced. I could say, oh, I want this male to f form a bond with, with this female, and it won't happen. Just gotta let nature run its course. She'll pick a male, or a male will pick a female, and there's your bond. Beautiful compressor steps. Keep wanting to call these guys calvers. That's that. Now I'll show you what the tank looks like. With the calvers in there. Oh, with the compressor steps in there. <laughs> okay guys, it's been 24 hours since I last uh, filmed this tank and I've had the DSLR camera set up on a tripod in front of the aquarium hoping to catch some activity for you guys to see. I did it yesterday afternoon after I put the fish in and I got some footage today, 24 hours later, hoping that they would have settled down by now and uh, been a bit more active in the aquarium. Now what I was seeing before I put the camera in front of the aquarium 
was a lot of activity at the shells. Uh, the fish were really at the front of the tank investigating the shells and not fighting uh, like I have seen calvus do before, but they were pretty much displaying to each other, uh, you know, kind of saying who's the boss around the shells. Uh, but the moment I walked into the fish room, they would all dart back to the back of the aquarium. Now, I have noticed that there are two females, well, what I suspect are females because they're the smallest uh, compressor steps of the six that are in this aquarium. Two of them are in the ton shells at the moment, so I have no idea if there was spawning activity over the last 24 hours. I would be very surprised if it happened that quickly. However, on the other hand, when I've introduced a ton shell into the calvus tank uh, with my black calvus, they've spawned within the first week as well, and I owned them for about a year beforehand. So uh, the moment I put that ton shell in there, they spawned. Uh, well, that was the black calvus, but it may have happened again. I'd be extremely lucky if it happened uh, on day one uh, with two females. <laughs> that would be amazing uh, from not having spawned them at all ever. Uh, to putting them in a tank that's purposely designed for them to spawn in. Uh, I'd be incredibly lucky for that to happen. But there are two smaller fish in the ton shells and the larger compressor seps are at the back of the aquarium. And they're at the back of the aquarium pretty much because I'm standing in the room. So anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment and consider subscribing to the channel and also share the video if you can. It really does help the channel and promoting this content out to new hobbyists on the interwebs. So that'd be great. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.